I have noticed that um, the more I've been pushing away the masculine energy, the less dudes I've been attracting. So I was like, I've been attracting a hell of a lot more guys in my masculine energy. But now that I'm like moving on a different wave, it's crickets. <laughs> it's crickets right now. And I'm okay with that, honestly, because right now I'm just really focusing on being a better woman. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah, I wanna feel so aligned. So right now you feel like you need a man. I wouldn't say need. I, <laughs> I wouldn't say need, but I do desire to have a significant other. Explain the difference to me. Um, need would be, from my perspective, it would be like, there's something that I, need, I want a man to do for me that I don't want to do myself. Or I just need someone to feel in space on times where I feel alone. Or I want somebody to take me to go get that pedicure instead of me having to do it for myself versus me wanting someone that will fit my lifestyle or, you know, someone I can bounce all the ideas off of, a connection. Do you think black men need black women? No. Hmm. Explain. Because honestly, as individuals, we can really do everything ourselves because I feel like a lot of black men say they need a woman they think about cooking and cleaning and stuff like that but to sustain life I don't think black men need women mm. I'm, I'm gonna give you my opinion <laughs> in a second but I want to explore it a little bit do you think you know do you think that's a productive way of thinking? If black men are on this corner saying we don't need women and black women are on that corner saying we don't need men, do you think that is a productive paradigm? No, it just sounds good. Why do, why do you think it's not productive? Um, I don't know, like, I'm lost <laughs> in this question. <laughs> Um, Why do you think it just sounds good? Because, like, in the black community, that's how we all feel. Like, I don't need a man. I don't need a woman. It's just, people say they do, but deep down inside, all you got to do is trigger a button and it'll come out instantly. Oh, I don't need these females. I don't need them. I don't need a man. I don't need them. You hear it from every angle. As soon as someone gets upset about something, it's on. But for you, do you feel like it's a problem? Do you, do you feel like it's an issue? Honestly, if you don't, that's fine. But do you, do you think, feel that it's an issue? Of course. Why do you think it's an issue? <sighs> There's no love. Like, why are we so bitter? Instead of like, Seeking out ways to pull greatness out of each other, we're against each other. Saying, oh, I don't need you for this and I don't need you for that. It just doesn't make sense. How can you hold both those thoughts simultaneously? The thought of it's not good, <laughs> it's not productive, and I don't need a man. How, how do you hold both those thoughts? To be honest, I don't know. This is a tough question. <laughs> yeah, I, feel, I, I think it's, it's tough. It's, it's, you know, the term is cognitive dissonance. It's like the stories we have to tell ourselves so we can sleep good at night. But the other part of ourselves knows that it's bullshit. We know, right. we know it doesn't stand up to scrutiny. Yeah, um, and I can agree because I've been that person that's like, mm -mm, I don't need a man, you know, moving in my own way and then... Yeah, after a certain point, I get into my late 20s, I'm just like, I've been moving in my masculine energy. And then I'm just like, <sighs> I 
I should have a man in my life. Having a man in my life is beneficial, even whether he's just a friend, a brother, a significant other. Like we all really actually do need each other, regardless. So, I think this is an important. I think what you said just now is really important, and I, I want to explore that because the. I don't need a man narrative is, is very prevalent, right? It's, it's common, it's not that new. What do you think men are good for? Like what, do, what do you think is our ministry? What, what do we bring to, to, to society, civilization, women's lives? What, what, what is the importance of men? Um, being a protector, you know, a shield over our lives. And I don't think people really understand what that means. I think they just think that means being strong, (laughs) you know, like physically, but it's all mental also. And even spiritually, we need men to protect us because as women, you know, one of our biggest gifts is intuition. And when we out here being a woman and just being ourselves, that means that we're being vulnerable we're relaxed. So it's the man's job to protect our vulnerability. Mm -hmm. So you think what men bring is like an energy? Mm -hmm. Hmm. So how do you reconcile? I'm trying to move away from my masculine into my feminine. I don't need a man. And I don't know any women who are good examples of femininity. How do you make that make sense? It don't make sense. (laughs) It doesn't really make sense. You know, it's one of those things like when you're trying to figure it out, it's always a question mark. And you're just like, okay, what do I do next? Who do I, you know, like go to, to, you know, what energy should I feed off of, you know? What steps should I take to, you know, dig deep and be more familiar? So there is um, there's this concept in psychology. It's called the Joe Harry window. And um, it's a it's a matrix, I think is the technical term. But it, it looks like one of those cartoon windows, like a square with an X in the middle. Right. And it's broken up into four quadrants. And, you know, um, at the top, it's, it says things that I know about myself, things I don't know about myself. At the side, it says things other people know about me, things other people don't know about me. I've heard well, about this. You've heard about yeah, it? Yeah, right. I have. Now, one of the squares is things I don't know about me that other people know about me. So an example would be like, you got broccoli in your teeth. You might not be able to see it, but I might be able to see it. Or you got lint on the, uh, in the back of your head. You might not be able to see, even though it's a you thing, but I might be able to see it. So I say that to say it's very important that we seek insight and perspective from the other, the other side, whatever the other side could be. And with this conversation, the other side is black men. But typically, black women don't care about what black men have to say. So... <laughs> This is an opportunity for us to change that paradigm. So what are your questions about femininity um, that I might be able to shed some light on? I think the question I have is what portion of our childhood should that have been the most important to learn? So I read somewhere that 97% of who we become as human beings, like as adults, is dictated by whatever happens between the time you're born and like seven years old. And if something bad happens within those years, for the most part, the rest of your life is going to be fucked up as a consequence. Um, And that's because in those early years, 
kids are still taking in cues. They're watching adults and things like that to figure out how to interact with the world. Like, what does uh, a happy interaction look like? What does a sad interaction look like? What does an angry interaction look like? And they're just recording. They're just tape recorders, right? Um, unfortunately, a lot of our people grew up in not just poverty, but also generational trauma. So a, a lot of times those years were compromised. And it's very hard to come back from that. But as adults, it is our responsibility to heal our inner child. And I'm glad you said that. <laughs> I'm so glad that you said that because there's so many um, adults that are bitter and angry and upset at their parents. And I get it. I get it. But they got to understand that our parents did the best they could. And some parents will acknowledge that a lot of parents won't. And I think a lot of people will sit in bitterness and pain and trauma and constantly blaming the parents either being distance or acting out instead of, you know, rolling up their shoulders, looking in the mirror and say, hey, this is my life. Let me figure out how to fix it. And I think, you know, the most important part about that is it's not necessarily a parent you need to forgive. It's your seven-year-old self your eight-year-old self, your nine-year-old self, who for some reason, because you're a child, you felt like you were at fault. You felt like it's because of me. You know, if, if I wasn't here or whatever, then things wouldn't be like this. And at the core, that's really what it is. And that's what's sad because a lot of times when that goes unaddressed, you literally just repeat the cycle. Right. You end up being exactly how shitty your mom was to you, to your daughter. All right, so... I think it's, it's about, and, and for some people that's very painful, you yeah. know, to, to, to do that, to peel back those layers. And that's why I recommend therapy, um, but it starts there. Yeah, I can agree hundred percent. Ask me something else. <laughs> um, do men really desire feminine women like they say, or, they, or do they really like masculine women more? Because a lot of men tend to, like, complain about masculine women. But if they're presented with more feminine women, they don't know what to do. I think masculine women are easier to have sex with. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and, you know, men, we are very sexual creatures, very visually driven creatures. So we see the utility for the you know masculine energy, but ultimately we know that's not what we want. <laughs> that's not that's not what we want inside the house. That's not what we want. You know, twenty years down the line, that's not what we want. Raising our kids, our sons, our daughters, we know that's not what we want. Now, the deeper answer to that is you have to decide on the life you want to live into your old age and then decide on the type of companion that's going to make sense for that life. So for most men who've self-actualized, who've done the work and who are top 1% guys, they want peace. Another nigga in the house doesn't bring you peace. <laughs> that's so true. I grew up with four brothers and... <laughs> Cause I got, I got to go out with my shield every day. I got to go out with my full armor. I want to be able to take that off when I get home. So no, ultimately <laughs> we gonna fuck you. But ultimately the masculine woman is not gonna win. And for me and, and you know, I assume other men who have, you know, wisdom and understanding, we can make the distinction, you know? This girl you play with, and this is a girl you build with. So, because I, I don't, I don't need what I already have. True. <laughs> I already, I already have a dick. What I need yours for? <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. Yeah, and and I think it's interesting because 
I think women understand it on some level because I've, I've heard girls say, you know, I met this dude and he was so fine. He was six foot, whatever. And he had a jawline and all this. But as soon as he opened his mouth, I lost interest. And it could be because his voice was light. It could be because he wasn't articulate. It could be because he was just goofy as hell. You know, so women understand it works that way, but they don't understand like it don't matter if I look good. If I walk like a man, talk like a man, the nigga's still going to try to fuck. <laughs> but ultimately, like to him, it's going to be the same as the light voice dude was to me. You know, but I think unfortunately what happens and this is where I'm, I'm hard on men. We, we keep incentivizing that type of behavior from our women because we stay in their DMs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We, 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 we stay texting them. We stay taking them on dates. We stay boosting them so they don't feel like there's anything wrong with me. And ultimately, they're the ones who are going to lose because those men aren't going to stick around. That's true. Um, I have noticed that... Um, the more I've been pushing away the masculine energy, the less dudes I've been attracting. So I was like, I've been attracting a hell of a lot more guys in my masculine energy. But now that I'm like moving on a different wave, it's crickets. <laughs> it's crickets right now. And I'm okay with that, honestly, because right now I'm just really focusing on being a better woman. And... The I think what you just said is really powerful because for men, the challenge for us in life, we do all kinds of stuff to make ourselves better, to peacock, right? So we can attract a large number of women. So a, a quote unquote high value man is gonna attract a lot of women. The difference is uh, a woman who's doing what she needs to do, she's not going to attract as many people. She's going to attract more quality people. So your, your job is quality, not quantity. Men's job is quantity and then refining it to quality. Right. right? And the other thing, too, is I think we don't give men enough credit. Men can see um, the BS. <laughs> Men, That's men, true. Men can I see, agree. men yeah. can see the be, especially the, especially the type of men you want. Because for me, what I tell women, the dusty dude shouldn't exist to you. They shouldn't, because if you're an attractive woman, you're going to attract everybody, right? right? But who you choose to entertain is what says something about you. Because I hear women complaining about men sometimes. I'm like, you know, oh, he was broke and he was unintelligent, things like that. But it was like, well, y'all. He was intelligent enough to hold your attention for six months. Y'all had conversations. The vibes were nice. So maybe you are not as intelligent as you give yourself credit of being because he was able to hold and captivate your attention. That's true. I can agree. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Ask me something else. I'm liking this.